compare English translations, and then consult the UBS Handbook series. So imagine you're investigating Genesis 1-1. Typically, this verse is handled one of two ways, as an independent act of creation or as the literary introduction to the acts that follow. And these two views are represented in modern English translations. To compare translations in your Logos library, go to the Tools menu and select to open the Text Comparison tool. When it opens, input the verse you want to compare, Genesis 1-1 then choose the translations or versions you wish to use. For this example, I'll input and compare the ESV, the NIV, the NRSV, the LEB, and the NLT, separating each set of abbreviations with a comma. Now, when I press Enter, Logos aligns each version of Genesis 1-1 side by side. Select the Show Difference button option to highlight where the translations differ. Note how the ESV translates the first verse as an independent clause. However, the NRSV translates it as a dependent temporal clause. To look deeper into translation issues like this, we'll consult the UBS Handbook series, created specifically for Bible translators. To access this commentary, input UBS Genesis into the command bar and press Enter, and Logos will open it to the verse we're studying. This particular work discusses translation decisions as well as how certain phrases need to be translated in certain cultures. If you use this commentary often, you can consult notes from this commentary series alongside the biblical text by linking the panels together. First, open the Resource Panel menu for the English translation and choose Link Set A, and then repeat this process for the UBS Handbook. Now, when you scroll through the biblical text, the commentary will follow along with you. To save this as a layout so that you can come back to it again and again, open the Layouts menu from the top right and select Save as Named Layout. Give it a name and Logos will save it as a workspace in the left-hand pane. Looking back at the commentary notes for Genesis 1-1, you'll notice in the discussion on the phrase in the beginning, the editors of this work note that translating verse 1 as an independent sentence has a long-standing historical tradition by most Jewish and Christian interpreters. However, in the ensuing paragraph, we read that other scholars translate the phrase in the beginning as a subordinate time clause, which typically renders in English as in the beginning when God created or when God began to create, followed by a few examples. Just below that, we're advised to check out a full discussion of this issue in Westerman's first volume of the Continental Commentary series. This is an add-on resource that you can purchase from Logos.com. To consult this commentary and others, click to open the Parallel Resource menu and choose the commentary you want to read, or right-click anywhere in this section, select the reference from the right, and choose to create a passage guide. In the Commentary section, Logos links me to all the commentaries in my library that discuss this verse. Select the link, and Logos will take you directly to the discussion of Genesis 1-1. To investigate the translation of Elohim, Open the inline search tool by clicking the spyglass in the toolbar. Input the transliteration and press enter. In the hits below, Logos highlights every place where this name appears in this commentary. You can view your results by sentence or to get a bit more context, switch your view to paragraph. From the very first hit, we learn that although the Hebrew word is in the plural form, it functions grammatically as a singular noun. Then we're supplied with a link to a fantastic article found earlier in this volume titled The Names of God in Genesis. Click the link to jump to this informative piece. Combining the text comparison tool with select commentaries allows you to investigate translation issues quickly and effectively.